Okay, what I'm looking at here is a Dell Optiplex 755 uh, ultra small form factor uh, computer. And this particular model, you can actually mount it onto the back of a monitor if you have the right type of stand. Uh, that's just how small this computer is. I mean, you can look at the size of the hard drive right here in comparison to the rest of the computer. Um, but this this should be uh, pretty much the same throughout all the models of the 755. Uh, as far as uh, Dell goes. And this might help some people with other brand computers with the same feature. Uh, this computer was actually showing a very strange symptom when I first got it. Uh, well, first off, this, uh, the previous owner of this computer had actually locked down the, the BIOS pretty good. And I had to go in there and uh, reset the thing just so that I can get and uh, change everything to the, uh, to the way I'm going to be using it. And uh, one of the things I noticed was that the uh, computer, while it was off, it would just randomly turn on. And you'd see all the lights do what they're supposed to do. You'd see the power light and the hard drive light go in there and start flashing and uh, all these lights back here would start turning on doing their usual sequence and after about a couple of seconds uh, it would just go and shut itself right back off and it would do this maybe once every 10 to 20 minutes it was completely random couldn't, I couldn't find any causes for it and at first I thought it was a defect of some kind like maybe there was a short maybe in the power supply or Maybe the motherboard had a problem, but and it really is a type of a motherboard problem. Uh, it's more like a software glitch. Um, it involves how the uh, basically whenever when these computers are hooked up to like a remote desktop type uh, setup, it is designed so that uh, you can actually control that based on. Or not, you know, basically you can, you can control it from a server. And the server could tell the computer to turn on or turn off. And in this computer's case, I'm not going to be using anything like that. So I went and disabled it. Now, you can actually go in here and disable it first. You need to go into the BIOS and go to where it says Post Behavior. When you open that, you're going to be looking for this one right here, MEBX Hotkey. Make sure that is turned on. As you can see, this one is already on. Once you have done that, escape, escape, and save it. Alright, after you save it, the computer is going to reboot. And the hotkey is Control P. And you got to do it quick. Because uh, it will be, it'll be there, then it'll be gone. Almost instantly. So, let me see here. This is a different screen than what I was getting before. Oh, that's right. That's because I already changed it. Um, whenever you first get into the screen, um, it will uh, ask you for a password. If nobody has messed with it, then, um, then uh, you will need to type in the default password, which is admin. That's A-D-M-I-N, admin. And uh, once it does that, it'll let you in. And then you immediately have to change the password to something much more complex. Uh, when I say it's much more complex, I mean it has to have at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number, and one symbol. And underscore does not count as a symbol. So uh, once, once, you have me uh, once it has met that criteria, then the next thing you need to do uh, is you know finally it'll let you go in there and change uh, settings to your liking, and you're gonna have a you're gonna have a few more options than what's showing up on here. I've already changed the settings, so it's not going to show all the options, obviously. And basically, what you're gonna want to do is go into Intel ME configuration. It'll give you a message. Yes, it'll restart whenever when you go and mess with the settings. Press Y. And then you're going to, and, and like I said, you're going to see many more options when you go to this menu. Uh, what the one you're going to be looking for is Intel ME State Control. You're going to press Enter. And make sure it's set to Disabled. As soon as you disable it, 
then uh, the computer is going to turn off. And after a few seconds, it'll go and reboot itself, and then every and then everything should be changed back to to, to the way it was, or to the way that you want it. And it should quit. Uh, it should quit turning on and off by itself. I know this also fixes the uh, random reboot issues, and also uh, not not completely uh, shutting down all the way like you can go and shut down and it, the computer will turn off and then maybe a few minutes later it'll go and turn back on and you'll see just a black screen and you know it'll it'll fix that issue too so uh, basically that is all you have to do it should be good to go after that and I guess I want to exit anyway Anyway, that's all you need to do. Uh, hope this helps out. Uh, hope this helps out a lot of people.